everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. So I got it into my head that I needed a little break from my current really big project, which is behind me here. Um, and also for this project, I really need a new chemise uh, because it's sheer on top on that dress and I need one of those chemises that has the ribbon straps. Now I haven't 100% decided yet whether I'm going to have the ribbon straps be able to come off completely and have it also be a strapless chemise or if I'm going to just have them permanently attached I'll have to play around with that but I've decided I'm going to make myself a ribbon strap chemise. Now traditionally these ribbon strap chemises were really used in the Edwardian period and because of that they were frequently actually combinations but there is some evidence of there being ribbon strap chemises as well. Technically this is an 1890s style outfit that I'm currently creating but when you, when you, when you need something you need something. So I'm going to make myself an Edwardian ribbon strap chemise to wear with an 1890s Elsa frozen dress that I'm making that you will see more of in videos to come later down the road. Now there doesn't seem to really be a pattern out there for a ribbon strap chemise. I've done a lot of googling and trying to find some inspiration. I've seen both uh, sort of drawings and, and ads and stuff from the period as well as some other ribbon strap chemises that people have made. And one of the things that I'm kind of basing my pattern on is we're going back to that pattern that I just loved so much. You'll know that sarcasm if you've seen the One Day Make Edwardian corset cover video. But that pattern, which is TV EO2, Truly Victorian EO2, it does actually have in it a an evening corset cover that is a ribbon strap corset cover. Um, and so that's what I'm doing with this. I'm taking that corset cover pattern and I'm turning it into a chemise. And I'm doing that by combining it with my kind of go-to newer Victorian chemise that I made about a year or so ago. Um, and I'm so I'm combining the two shapes and going to make a ribbon strap chemise out of the ribbon strap corset and cover and the Victorian chemise. I did self draft that Victorian chemise pattern so I'm actually using my chemise itself as my pattern really. I didn't make a pattern for it I just kind of went for it last time but it's a chemise that works really well. It's not too full and gathered like a lot of chemises are. They're so voluminous. This one is really not. It's a little bit more fitted so um, and it happens to be fairly close in size to the corset cover pattern. So I figure I can do it no problem. Um, so that's my goal. I'm going to try to do this as a one day make or specifically a one afternoon slash evening make. Um, because I learned so much from my last one day make video, it's a one fifty one now. A little later start than I had intended and also I still haven't eaten lunch. So I am going to have to eat lunch at some point. I am also going to have to walk my dog at some point and I'm going to have to go grocery shopping at some point because it's been three weeks since I've gone grocery shopping and I'm out of most foods. Um, so I will have to work around all of that with this make but honestly I think this is something that's going to go pretty darn quickly. It's it's a chemise. It's a really simple garment and even better it's a strapless chemise so it's an even simpler garment. We're talking like shaped tube, two seams, finishing the edges, ribbons, uh, and lace. So that's my plan. I've gotten all my materials. I have everything out and drafting the pattern should be like really easy as well. Famous last words, right? Hopefully not. Fingers crossed that this all goes smoothly and this video, who knows, will be like 10 minutes long because that's maybe all it'll take me to make this. Maybe I can have this done by the time I need to go eat some lunch. So yeah, I doubt it. Okay, anyway, let's jump in and get started. All right, so this is what I'm starting with. I have the corset cover pattern, which to make the evening version, what we do is we cut along this dotted line right here. And, um, and I have my old, or not even that old, Victorian chemise right here. Um, I did also pull out the chemise pattern that comes with TVEO2, but it's honestly not what I want. It's so, so voluminous that even if I take a bunch of sizes out, I'm supposed to be a J, which by the way, this chemise piece 
is for some reason F-G-H-J-I-K, because that's right. Um, but uh, it's just so voluminous that even if I take a few sizes out, it's just huge. So I'm going to get rid of that entirely and just work with my existing chemise, which I have laid flat and folded in quarters, I guess. And I'm going to work with the corset cover front piece. Oh yeah, I suppose there's a back somewhere too. Is that what this is? Oh, look at that, corset cover back piece. And that's the evening height. So that's what I'm gonna be working with. I have this lace that I got from Joann's yesterday. It was my first time going in a store that wasn't a grocery store in three months. Exciting, I know, right? So we're going to use this lace for around the neckline. I have some ribbon to go through, which is going to, it's beading lace. It's the only beading lace Joann's has. Um, but I have ribbon, so that's going to kind of work as a drawstring. And then I also have ribbon for the straps. And hopefully it's close-ish to my skin tone. Because I would like to be able to leave the straps on. I think this won't really show through. I know it's really shiny right now. But I think it won't really show through the neckline. So um, if that doesn't work, what I'm probably going to do is put some hooks and eyes or snaps on one end. Probably the front end. And um, that way I can just like undo the ribbon, but I just don't know support wise how that will work. You know when you do stupid things and go into your studio after two days and find an uncapped friction pen? Rest in peace friction pen, I don't think you're gonna serve me anymore. First step, press your fabric. You can't when people don't press their fabric first because then everything's gonna be wrong. Uh, this is just muslin. I am just using what I had on hand. Ideally, this would have been a slightly lighter weight cotton, but muslin will have to do. So I'm going to cut two body pieces out of muslin, a front and a back. So for some reason, and I really don't know why, um, the back of the corset cover piece from this pattern is way shorter than the front. I guess it's because the front was meant to poof, but I am going to dismiss the back entirely and just use the front and my pattern or my chemise existing chemise as my pattern to figure out where I'm going to cut and I'm kind of winging this but like I don't know fingers crossed hopefully it'll work I think it'll be fine so I know there are a lot of weird shadows in this hopefully you will be able to see what I'm doing uh, but I have laid my Victorian chemise on top here and I'm going to basically trace around the outside with a friction pen. I'm drawing a line around the pattern. Um, right now I'm drawing a line just as is with this, even though I'm not actually going to use the height of this neckline. This neckline's pretty high. After all, it is Victorian. And I'm just giving myself a rough outline of where I want this to be. All right. I don't think you can see my lines at all, but I have lines here that I've drawn in. Um, I'm going to now lay the corset cover pattern on top and just see kind of where it corresponds. So lining up the, un the armpit here, the bottom of the arm's eye, you can see that it's like I don't know, pretty far off. I don't think that I want my neckline to be quite this low because that just seems really very low. And I granted this is strapless, so I guess it really doesn't matter, but that's scooping way below where the armpit is, which just seems low. So for now, I'm going to draw in my neckline a couple inches down from my existing one. But, oh, and in fact, actually this line right here is where it's supposed to be for the evening corset cover. I've just drawn this on the paper because I'm working on the back of the pattern. Um, so it's even lower. It just makes me a little nervous to have it that low, but I am going to follow this armpit a little bit more because one of the things I don't like about my existing Victorian corset is that the armpits honestly are cut way too high. I should have done that better. Um, but I'm, so I'm drawing in the armpit approximately where this is. But I think, eh, I'll drop this neckline down a little bit more. And I'm going to kind of follow this shape-ish. 
until I get to a point where I can meet up with my armpit. So what I've come up with, let's get rid of the, this other mark. What I've come up with is this is going to be the approximate neckline right here of the chemise top. And then this is going to be the approximate arm's eye, but I want a little bit more of a level spot potentially for the ribbon to come in. So I'm gonna level this out a little bit and go like that and erase my lines. Okay, so I know this is really kind of shadowy and bad, but now you can hopefully see the arm's eye and the neckline. Again, I'm gonna just even this out a little bit. I'm also going to even the side of the body out because it looks like quite a mess. So I'm going to take my ruler and just make it a little nicer. And straighter. Okay, so this piece that I currently have drawn out is really, it's supposed to be the front piece. Um, but honestly, I think I'm going to use it for front and back, at least for now. And if I have to cut some neckline away from one side, then fine. But I think it's pretty much, I might actually take out a little bit of the scoop in the back and make it a little bit flatter. But otherwise, I think it's pretty much what I, what I want. on another piece for the back. I have everything cut out now, so now I'm going to search all of my edges because that's how I finish basically all my edges on everything. And I'm going to sew up the two side seams and then I'm going to kind of look at where that neckline hits on me. size for lack of a better uh, descriptor and I'm going to see over my clothes and everything what this is doing for me which is probably nothing with this shapeless sack but that's the ribbon here okay so the back is like incredibly wide so it's just kind of like falling off my back but I think Maybe I'm gonna need to gather that or something. Ooh, and it's stabbing me. atrocious but um, I don't know I mean once this is like gathered in I guess it will help to prevent the straps from falling off my shoulders um, but I'm kind of thinking that I might actually run gathering stitches through the back and actually sew the gathers into place basically and then just have the beading lace be in charge of this because I feel like trying to get that gathered when there's like the arms line and everything yeah that's just gonna be weird so yeah I think that's what I'm gonna do I probably could have even taken a seam out of the back plans. 
sides. I've decided to make a seam in the center back and take out some of that fabric because it's just a lot. So I'm probably gonna take out a good three inches at least of the back and make that center seam. All right, so I went and I did a seam down the center back. Uh, basically, I started with three inches taking out right at the top went a little bit even farther maybe even up to four inches by the time it hit the waist and then tapered it out to a half inch just so that I could allow for the seam by the time it hit the hem so um, I like it much better now I think it's fitting pretty well where I don't really have to worry about gathering it and it'll still be like great under a corset and everything um, I like what the top is doing. I think this little bit will be gathered in just no problem with the beading lace. So I think I'm ready to just go ahead and like bind the entire top. Um, I'm hoping that I have enough bias tape to do that, pre-made bias tape, because otherwise it means I have to make bias tape, which is going to take a lot longer. But um, Joanne's, as I'm sure, well, by the time this video goes up, maybe Joanne's will have bias tape. But right now it is June 19th. There's no bias tape in any Joanne's right now. So um, my stash is dwindling mightily. But we'll see if I can get it out of here because basically that's the only other thing besides like sewing these ribbon straps in place and sewing my lace, wherever it went, my lace in place along the top as well. So, and then that'll be it for this. So this might be like... Well, it's 2.47 now. It's been less than an hour. I think I could finish this off by 3.30? Maybe? Lion would really like that because then we could go for a walk. I forgot to mention the other thing that I have to do now because I took in the back is I'm going to cut that seam open so that it has just a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to serge those edges and well I'm going to press it then I'm going to serge the edges. So do have that to do as well. Luckily, I do have enough pre-made bias tape, so I am just going to go ahead and bind around the entire neckline and the arm size. Um, I'm going to sew it down like right sides together, flip this inside, and then I'm just going to sew it down by machine because it's going to be covered with the lace everywhere except the armpits anyway, and those are my armpits, so people aren't going to be staring at the chemise in my armpits. At least, they better not be. Now that everything has been bound off on the neckline, I am going to put my ribbons, um, just attaching them to the back for now. These ribbons that I had cut out for trial earlier are way too long, so I'm only singeing or melting or whatever one end for right now. I think this one, yeah, it already has one. Um, I've decided that I am going to make them so that they can unhook or unsnap, I haven't decided on that part, from the front because that way I could also potentially wear this chemise with uh, when I have an evening gown that has like a really wide neckline and I just can't have straps at all. So uh, I am gonna make it so they can just be undone and then tucked down in the back of the bodice and they'll just connect right here at the front of the chemise with again either a snap or a hook. I'll have to kind of play with some engineering and figure out which one is better but I'm going to go ahead and sew the ribbon onto the back points and add the lace so my straps are sewn on I just did a st stitches around in a square sorry it's not focusing very well on that but uh, now it's time to add the lace I am NOT going to add the lace in the armpits because itchy um, so it's just going to go around the front and also I'm pretty sure I'm putting it in the back um, <laughs> 100% decided but I'm pretty sure and it's going to get sewn down on either side of the beading lace portion and just go all the way across the front like that. 
I put the front beading lace on and I decided I wasn't sure about how if I like the back beading lace or not so I just pinned it in place on here and what that has made me realize is I don't like the fact that it's this double-edged beading lace so I'm going to make it slightly harder on myself and I'm going to take off the top edge for putting on the back so that it'll just go down um, because I do still like having lace back there just not the extra ruffle up that is basically it other than running the ribbon through the beading lace and putting the closures on the front of the ribbon straps. So it's basically done. I still need to add the beading lace and the closures on the straps. Um, but since it's like 3.45 now and I still have not eaten lunch, I'm going to go take care of that and do that after lunch. Alright, I'm back. It is 4.36 now and I'm feeling much better now that I've had what I guess is probably more like dinner, not lunch. Um, I realized I didn't hem this before, so I do have to hem this as well. But I'm going to go ahead and hem this and run the beading lace through, and um, which means I'll have to like secure by the beading lace, I mean the ribbon through the beading lace, because obviously the beading lace started there. Um, but I will have to secure each end of the ribbon as it gets around, possibly in like every section, like underarm, back. I don't know if I can go from one to the other. So that is my next thing to do, plus the hem. Then I will mark where those straps need to be and just sew a little closure on them and that's it. For the ribbon, I'm running it through with a bodkin. If you don't have one of these, I highly, highly recommend getting them because I can thread my ribbon through, since this is a nice quarter inch ribbon, and literally just thread this, if you can, hopefully you can see it, thread this through the beading lace like that going under and over and under and over and just pull that through and it's in so it's like super super easy Alright, I finished the hem, so now I was just trying to figure out uh, where exactly I want to affix these. I've decided to use snaps. I'm using kind of a smallish medium one, but uh, they're really strong, so I don't think they'll just like pull apart and pop. And I figured that way, just in case I shift around a hook and I might undo itself, a snap is probably going to stay in place better. So I'm going to snap them. They're gonna The ribbons are going to go underneath the lace line of the of the uh, chemise but I think I like the ribbon placement where it is right now so I'm going to um, take this off measure it to make sure that they're the same length and go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold <clears throat> the ends over a couple layers probably so that it's three layers total and stitch the snap to that so it gets a little bit more structure and then the other snap will go on the inside of the chemise so I'll put that on that's the last thing that I have to do so I will be done with this hopefully in like five to ten minutes I am a really slow hand slower have I mentioned that so yeah even just four sides of snaps might take me ten minutes but whatever and she's done I know it doesn't look like much and that's because it isn't much but uh, I did finish. It is 5.36 right now, so an hour after my lunch dinner break. And uh, it's got the little beading lace, the ribbon straps, which have snaps that are putting them, uh, attaching them closed, and then the beading lace in the back, but without the extra sticking up floof that the front has. So overall, I am quite happy with it. I think it will work very nicely. Something like this. Um, and it's just a very, very simple chemise. This was done in under three hours, so that's always nice. I'm surprised it took me that long, to be perfectly honest. But um, part of that was messing with the beading lace and doing the snaps, because again, world's slowest hand sewer. 
um, but it is all done. So a nice, quick, easy project. Um, I'm glad that I knocked that out of the way. I just wanted to come back on here with a quick addendum to this project. So I did actually make some changes after finishing this project, and uh, that is that I added a yoke in the back of the chemise. I found that when I put it on for the first time, it was way, way, way too low in the back. And you know, I'm a plus size person. It just wasn't attractive. We'll just leave it at that, right? Also, it really would not have protected my bodice from sweating at all because it just did not come high up high enough. It was just way, way, way too low. The other thing that in hindsight that I probably should have changed is this lace. There's really no point in it being like sticking up like this because it just flops down. Um, it kind of stays up by the center and that's about it. I, I really didn't need that lace, but you know, I was trying to be pretty, so whatever. Um, but I do like the back way, way more now. What I wound up doing was I took off the binding and the lace and I gathered just slightly the top of the back of the chemise. And then I put on a yoke that was, I believe it was one inch smaller on each side. So a total of two inches smaller where it met the top of the chemise. And then it also tapers in a little so that it follows that line of the arm's eye. And, um, and then once I had that back on, I rebound everything, having to add in a little extra piece of bias tape, of course, and redid the lace, again, having to add in a little piece of lace, re-threaded my ribbon through, and um, reattached the straps in the back, shortening the straps by about three inches, because that's the height of the little yoke piece that I put on, was, um, I think it was three inches plus seam allowance, so it was actually a total of four. So anyway, it's way, way better now. I'm uh, much happier with how it fits. And these straps, as you can tell, really do blend into my skin because I am actually light pink. So <laughs> I'm happy with this project. Overall, I still consider it like a three hour make because had I known what I should have known in the beginning, I would have put a yoke or just done the back higher to begin with. But I salvaged the project and now it's one that I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of use out, out of because it is also detachable so I can wear it under those ball gowns as well. So anyway, this is my chemise. Back to past Rebecca for the end of this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post here just about once a week, but I post pretty much every day, if not more often than every day, over on Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram as well. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you in my next video. Happy sewing!